hey welcome back in this video i'm gonna show you how to do like a calendar picker or a date picker it's usually not really the best idea to have like a pop-up date input field it has been proven again and again that just having simple fields for day month and a year for wherever the dates could go is probably the best way to engage with the users and because it's quite simple even if it requires multiple let's say tabs or clicks to go from one field or another and it's also quite hard to make let's say a calendar pop-ups which are historical meaning let's say if you want to select a date like 30 years ago you might need to consider when the year jumps the month jumps and so forth and it just becomes you know a proper headache so it really depends where you use if you're a madman who wants it anyways this is fine so i'm actually gonna show you exactly how to do it and in this example i have a mobile app mock-up as you can see in sketch and i have let's say a fictitious brand we can escape and we have let's say fly flight options where users are able to select outbound date and as well as return date and here let's say if a user would click or tap on one of the options the calendar would pop in and then we can just select the date so what i'm gonna show you how to do the date selectable and and how to pre-populate that in our final renders of of the prototype let's go ahead and recreate these uh, static assets in action really quick as per usual And so we transferred all the files and all the static imagery into Axure. And just to preview that everything is all more or less in place, as you can see, everything is nothing is really clickable, everything is just an object. And next, we're also going to set up the calendar bits uh, so that we have that ready. And just exactly how we did before, let's copy it in using the Axure plugin. All right, so I set up all my assets. Now, before we proceed with implementing the functionality, what I wanted to show you is, as you can see, my calendar actual panel is in a dynamic panel, which I intentionally put in and I hit it. But the point is, when we load the page, you're gonna see that it's displayed a little bit up. And if, let's say, we have more content, it would just have like a spacing down below. So a good way to fix this is actually pin it to browser if you remember from previous videos and i would just pin it let's say in the bottom of a page and probably let's say center so it centers the panel if i reload it fixes the thing to the bottom so it's always gonna appear down below doesn't matter how big the window is let me just show you if i resize as you can see the panel just go up and if let's say if it's huge or for whatever reason users would view it on a huge screen this would just be fixed to the bottom which is great exactly what we're looking for so now next some of the things what i would want to do is just hide that panel maybe giving it first a name so saying calendar and i'm gonna hide it like so and probably also misplace it just out of the picture so it doesn't overlap all the other items before we proceed i would just check these bits uh, convert into the dynamic panels like so and so I would tell both of them that on click just show that panel which we hid and let's just select it uh, calendar here it is and we are gonna animate it by sliding it up because we have that fixed type of mobile approach which is great and maybe 400 ms or so and we would want to bring it forward as well in more options panel just in case we overlap any new items over it so it doesn't look jacked and distorted and copy the same thing to the other item as well copy paste and now if we load it you're gonna see that we have not don't have any panels yet but if we click boom it animates in now it's up to you to kind of like you know to make it smooth animation wise and do other things you can bounce bounce it in perhaps like so let me just show you you have those all those effects so maybe you can let, let's say slide up and then select that it bounces in or something like that like so and if we actually let me place it back in and if we preview 
can select that. Boom. It's really abrupt, uh, but you get the drill. I'm going to remove it for now. Play with it. Check out my previous videos on animations. I created, I think, three, four videos on different animation bits of how to do so. It's a really good source for you to start. So play with it, experiment as per usual. Now the next bit, what I would want to do with calendar picker, because we already called it in, is to go ahead and inside that panel and start making changes. I would probably create a dynamic panel just with all these items so we can switch back and forth because the dates might vary. But for now, the most important bit is to actually make a selector. As you can see by default, we have it 16, but it shouldn't be present before the user actually clicks on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create a dynamic panel for it and call it, let's say, selector, like date selector or something like that. Now, there is a lot of different ways to do so. You could create a dynamic panel for each of the numbers, but that would be an overkill because you can make it a toggle. I just like to move the actual selector when I click on, let's say, certain items. So you see we have a current day, which is always static. But let's say if I click on two, this bit should just move to number two. And how you can do so is by capturing every coordinate or every x and y value for each of a thing. So the next thing what we would do is just grab a notebook like so and make sure that you have like a sharpie next to you and if you remember mentioning from previous videos it's quite essential to uh, for us to capture let's say the dimensions, the coordinates and so forth and what we are gonna do is we're gonna start capturing the, the coordinates for each of these bits then let's say they're activated. So let's say this is our active thing. And if it's there, we would capture the coordinates and on X and Y axis from these two fields. And if it's, let's say for a second one, we capture that. So whenever a user clicks on one or the other of the items, we would just move that selector uh, to the specific coordinates and it would just move around. And it would be quite smooth as well for users to understand. So. This is how we can do it. And um, without further ado, I'm gonna show exactly my process. And it's basically, I would go ahead and create a matrix, uh, just filling in all the bits. So let's say for each of the days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then 16, because we have like, you know, 30 days it might be, make sense to just split it. So I'm gonna just make a matrix for each of the days, like so 10, 28, 29, and 31 in this case. Now, the next thing what I would do, I would just have X and Y bits on top, like so. And I would go ahead and just take that selector and just start capturing for each of the days. So as you can see, number one uh, coordinates are 126 and 370. And then go ahead and do the same with number two. And that's 170 and 370. And as you can see, the same row items are gonna have the same coordinates for Y axis. So you just move them with arrow keys like so, let's say. And that's 215, 370, and do so for every single item. And next, we're just gonna assign an action and say on click on this number, just move that item to that coordinate. So let's go ahead and speed run this. Boom, and we're done. So that took maybe a couple of minutes. Uh, it's a bit of a repetitive task, but it's definitely worth it. Now I have captured all my dimensions I need to kind of take those numbers and then push around the selector on user interaction. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do so. I would just go ahead and say on click, let's say, move that. But as you can see, our text field is quite small. I'm afraid that, let's say, if a mouse clicks on something like a white space in between, it might not be accurate. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna increase the size of a clickable area like this. 
So, you know, it's a bit much more mobile friendly, let's say. And I'm gonna do add new interaction on click and just say move, select our selector, if you can find it. I already forgot what I named it. Uh, date selector, great. Thank God for conventions, which we make. And next, I'm gonna say two. So where are we moving it? And all those captured dimensions and coordinates is exactly what we're gonna use. So let's say, I know that number one, as you can see in my notebook, is at 126 and 370, and that's exactly what I'm gonna input. So 126 and 370. And we don't need to animate, it's just gonna shift it really quickly. If you want to, please do so. If you want to, for example, uh, from one day to the other kind of shift back and forth, do so. I don't think it's necessary. I think we can just move it around I immediately, if you know what I mean. Other than that, just play around with animations if you feel like it. And that's, that's one of our bits. Now what I would want to do is kind of go ahead and just copy that hotspot, like so, and just edit the coordinates. So we know for sure that the Y coordinate for this row is the same. I know that it's 170 based on my notes. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just replicate the same behavior for all of the things. Boom. And another couple of minutes later, and as you can see, I have a lot of actions on our calendar. So now, in theory, if I hide my, our selector, it should work, but we forgot one bit, is that the, in interactions, we're moving it, but it's still hidden. So a good idea might be, let's say, on click, it's also adding another action, which is basically show, and we need to show the selector, like so, and just showing it simply. So meaning that, let's say, if it's hidden by default and you, as a user you know exactly what date you want to select, it's actually doing both. It's not just moving the selector, but also showing it if it's hidden. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this behavior to every of the fields. So I just copy and paste, like so. And now if we preview a prototype, immediately we can open the picker of the dates. And as you can see, I can select any date I want. Again, as you can see, the pixels are not perfect, so you might want to play around and see if you can adjust the coordinates. I would done like a really quick job here. And you might create business rules, let's say that you can select, let's say the same date you are on, or maybe gray out the dates which were past, so you can select what's in the past. Or don't even show that, I just wanted to show you an example of how, you know, current date could look like. But it's up to you, and you can do so much of it, there's a lot of to be done. Now, the last bit, what we want to do is actually, if I selected the date, as you can see, the button doesn't do anything right now. I would just want to hide this panel and then pre-populate our field. Let me just show you really quick that field with, um, with a date of what we selected in the style of other bits. So as you can see, it becomes smaller. I would just simply drag this away, the calendar for now again, and I would just probably create two different panels. One would be default again, probably remember this from other videos, and another would be, let's say, filled in. Simple as that. Now in a filled in state, we would want to replicate the same styling we had in the other bits. So let's say we're gonna make this as a selector. So I'm gonna call it, let's say, a date field. Okay, so I, I made this panel. Now everything is great. I have a name for it, or I can give it a name, sorry. So I'm gonna give it a name, um, let's say outbound date. So we know exactly what we are changing. And now I'm gonna go back to the calendar and I'm gonna say on select, when this button is selected, which we can, let's say, make dynamic panel really quickly like so. Uh, I'm gonna call it a button. This is a good practice. A new interaction, I'm gonna say uh, on click, set panel state, 
and find our panel, which is unbound date. And we're gonna set, set it to filled in, meaning that we have selected the date. That's fine. And then we can do something more with it. So let's say we can pre-populate what date is selected with variables if you are keen to do so. But you know, you would want to actually detect where the item is and then which one is selected. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how I would do so. So every time we select the item on click, you would want to pre-populate the variable value. So I would go like this, find set variable value in the actions and create a new variable. As you can see, I have some other variables, but let's say this is gonna be our date. And by default, let's say it's a zero like so, but we are just gonna choose our date variable and set the value, let's say one. So we set it manually and do so for every single item here. Really quick, just pasting it in and editing the actual value. Boom, so every item now sets the variable uh, value to what it is exactly. As you can see, 10, we select a 10, 25, we'd set it to 25. Every time we would click select button, we would want to take that value from variable, whatever is updated now, and then push it to a text field. So I'm gonna do that with insert action, set text. And then if we find our date value, as you can see, date field value, we're just gonna set it, set it to, and then value of variable, and we can find the value of variable, let's say, which is our date. And of course, in this case, it would be just one number. So let's say 10. Now, next up, what we would want to do is, of course, close this panel so that we can see the result. So I would just sh say show hide. We can set, select calendar and just hide it and slide it down really quick, like so. And just let's preview what happens then. So unbound date. We select, let's see, 23 or 15, doesn't really, let's say 23, update it. And as you can see, we got our 23 here. So it switched the state of a dynamic panel as well as updated the text field. Now it's only 23, right? So it's not really a date. So what we can do with it, we can edit that statement of set text. And instead of setting value, so we can say, let's say text. And here we can do the functions. If you remember from previous videos, functions are really powerful and what makes Axure a muscle tool. So I'm gonna select function. I'm gonna insert our value of variable and I can also prefix some text to it. Now, it's kind of like up to you to how you would want to do it, but I presume that the day is gonna come first, our selector, then it's month. So we can say, let's say March, 2019 or have like, uh, you know, slash 03 slash 2019. I think ours is March 220, but it's really up to you to how you want to handle it. The functions allow that. And if we click done and preview it, you're gonna see that the effect is pretty nice. So by default, we have nothing. We open the actual calendar picker. We can select, let's see, 12 set, and we have 12th of March, 2020. And that's how you make the calendar picker happen. Again, it's a questionable pattern. Um, let's say on desktop users would definitely benefit from just having input fields on mobile. It's different because we have a bit more flexibility uh, with the feedback and actual interactive patterns. So see what works for your users. Again, user test it. Maybe you can improve it somehow. But I hope this video was useful. I hope you understood how I used coordinates to affect position of our selector like so. And I hope that, you know, the variable bit was also interesting to you because, you know, once we click, let's say on 10, it saves a value like that, it pushes to variable, and then we can actually use it in any text field as we wish with functions. So as per usual, thanks so much for your attention. If you like this video, give a like, subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more material. And I'll see you next time.